Hi, Tom here. I had an interesting discussion last night at work. Um, it was about um, the possibility of extraterrestrial life in the universe. And, you know, it, it's quite amazing that um, you have some people who really believe that um, we humans are the only living creatures in the entire universe. I mean, they really believe that, you know. And when you, um, when you ask further questions about that, they quickly revert back to, uh, you know, their religion. And once people start ranting and rambling about religion, um, it's the end of the discussion, right? I mean, it's the end of the academic, of an academic discussion, right? Because if I'm going to tell you, look, uh, let's talk about the possibilities of uh, extraterrestrial life in the universe. And then you cut me off and shut me down and talk about your religion and your God who's created this planet only and has populated this planet only in the entire universe and there's, there's been nothing before us and there will be nothing after us. You know, religion is about faith, so I can I argue about faith, you know? So I don't think religion should be part of the discussion, but let's talk about that, you know? Is there extraterrestrial life on Earth? So, planet Earth, we live on planet Earth, right? 7.2 billion people and counting. Planet Earth is part of the universe. But more importantly, it's part of the solar system. Our solar system. So we have the Sun and many other planets moving around the Sun, moving around our Sun. We are one of many other planets. There are many other suns in our galaxy, the Milky Way. So our sun, our majestic sun, our wonderful sun, you know, our sun that keeps us alive. Yes, it's enormous, as majestic as our sun is. And, and you could argue that, you know, our sun is our god, because if our sun explodes and dies, then we know we die. You know? So yeah, you could argue that our sun is our god in a way, you know. You know it what our sun sustains us, keeps us alive. But in the galaxy, you know, in, in, in the bigger scheme of things, in our galaxy, in the Milky Way, our Sun is only one of billions of other suns. There are billions of other suns in our galaxy, the Milky Way. And so, because there are billions of other suns, billions of other stars, there are billions of other solar systems. And so, there are billions, hundreds of billions of other planets in our galaxy. Hundreds of billions of other planets some bigger than planet Earth, some smaller than planet Earth. 
some younger than planet Earth and some much, much older than planet Earth. And so now to think that of those hundreds of billions of other planets in our galaxy, our little planet Earth is the only one with life in it. I mean, that becomes a crazy idea, actually, you know. It's crazy. And it's not very humble. I mean, if you really think that, that, you know, we alone, then it means that, you know, I mean, you, you don't have any um, humility, you know. You know, you're not, you're not humble enough. You know, to consider how small you are, you know, you know, in, 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 in the universe. Now, some people say insignificant, you know, and, and, and I disagree. I mean, we are very, very, very small as a planet, but we're definitely not insignificant. The fact that, you know, we are alive. The fact that you, as an individual, are alive, you are significant. You are life. You're breathing. You're thinking. So you are significant. You are as significant as the billions of other planets around. So, you know, there's a big difference between being small and being insignificant, you know. But, I mean, that's, that's a topic for your discussion, you know. So, basically... Continuing on that train of thoughts, right? The Milky Way, our galaxy, has, has hundreds of billions of planets. Of these hundreds of billions of planets, naturally, there must be life somewhere else. You know, our planet, you know, planet Earth, is 30,000. Well, I don't want to give you the wrong information. Yeah, I think you know, I stand to be corrected, but planet Earth, I mean, our galaxy, I mean, sorry, our solar system. Our planet is 30,000 light years away from the center of our galaxy. So the Milky Way, our galaxy, right, as a center, and all the other suns, all the other solar systems are moving around that center, that nucleus of the Milky Way. But our solar system, which is very, very small, as compared to the billions of other solar systems, our solar system is 30,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's amazing, 30,000 light years away. I mean, one light year is about 300,000 kilometers. You know how many kilometers that is, that's, you know. So, what, what I'm saying, and, and this is where it's becoming scary, is that you look at our Milky Way, which has hundreds of billions of planets. And then you expand that to the universe, which is, by the way, forever expanding, right? There is hundreds of billions of other galaxies In fact, since the universe is expanding, 
there is, you could say, an infinity of other galaxies, right? But, you know, for the sake of this discussion, let's say that, you know, we have hundreds of billions of other galaxies. And each galaxy has hundreds of billions of planets. Now it becomes impossible to believe that, you know, planet Earth which is a grain of sand at the beach. Little planet Earth is the only dot in the universe where there is life. Impossible. It's quite clear that there must be Billions of other worlds with living creatures inhabiting them. Yeah. And, 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 that, and that's the scary part because now, you know, if you look at the evolution of the human species, right? Just 200 years ago, there were no planes flying around. Three hundred years ago, there were no cars moving around the streets. So, you know, in the last three hundred years, uh, we have made a lot of progress, right? From traveling um, with horses and camels and, and, and stuff like that, to now, Everybody, everybody's got cars around. Flying from point A to point B is like taking the bus almost, you know? And now if you look at the last 50 years, just in the way we communicate, Fifty years ago, Wi-Fi, Internet, and all that stuff that we're doing today, I mean, you couldn't do it. I mean, 50 years ago, you know, the laptop wasn't even around, you know, for, um, as a commercial um, product for everybody to use, you know. So if you look at the human technological progress in the last 50 years in communication, in medicine, I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. It's, it's moving so fast, right? I mean, in the last century, you would get the flu, you'd have a 50-50 chance of surviving. Polio was common. You look at the progress that humans have made in the last hundred years, we've made so much technological progress, you know, progress in the world of medicine, in all areas of life. And now think about planets that have living creatures that have been around for millions of years before us, meaning living extraterrestrial creatures that they've had a million years of progress as compared to us. I mean, a million years ago, the Homo, the Homo sapiens sapiens wasn't around. So now think about some living creatures somewhere in some other planet at some other corner of some galaxy somewhere that have been making progress for millions of years. Can you just imagine how much more advanced they could be as compared to us? I mean, if you keep making, if you keep making progress like that, just imagine, I mean, Im imagine us in 500 years. And I imagine 
human beings in a thousand years. You know, the year is 3017. Just imagine the kind of world uh, human beings will be living in. And now just imagine human beings in the year 4017. What about the year 24,017? I mean, can, can you imagine? Now imagine a world somewhere where people have been making progress for a million years. I mean, that's very scary. It means that, you know, such people, such creatures will be so advanced, man, technologically advanced and spiritually advanced and, and, and you know, that it would be impossible for them to relate to us Should they meet us, it would be impossible to communicate with them. You know, it would be a bit like us communicating with I don't know um, birds or lizards. You can't have a meaningful conversation with a lizard or with a cat, right? Or with a worm. I mean, there's no way. I mean, you know, I mean, unless you're in a psych in a psychiatric hospital, you can't have a conversation with a worm or with a cockroach, right? Or, or something like that. So now just imagine a society, you know, um, a world where living creatures have been around for millions of years and they've been making progress because their planet is billions of years older than our planet. Just imagine. I mean, there will be no communication possible. They will just look at us and they will think we're so primitive that, you know, that it's, you know, it's impossible. So anyway, you know, that's, that's, um, that, that's, that, that's quite interesting, you know. It's, it's scary, in a way. But it's also interesting, you know. And, um... I think you know we need we need to evolve you know we need to we need to grow as 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 a human species you know we need to improve ourselves and strive to become better faster i mean we are we are primitive people i mean you know in most countries i mean we're still at war with each other you know we still resort to brute force and violence to settle our differences, you know. Countries at war with, with each other, you know. Um, often people who are quite alike in terms of DNA and, and you know, um, genotype and phenotype, you know, these are the people usually at war with each other. And so England and France were neighbors and for years, years and years and years, you know, they were at war with each other, you know. Spain, England, France, you know, for years they were at war with each other. When World War II started, you know, I mean, Germany was at war with its neighbors. Japan and China, for a long time, were at war with each other, you know. Look at the Middle East. And if you really look at the problem between, um, I mean, the different conflicts in the Middle East, it's actually people who are close to each other, both physically, you know, and historically as well. You look at Africa, same thing. 
conflicts and stuff is between people who are close to each other. And then, you know, on a more global, at a more global level as well, um, yeah, we, we're just very primitive, you know. We want to dominate others, take other people's resources, you know, have the most bombs, you know, the most nuclear weapons, you know. We're still threatening to use nuclear power. I mean, uh, you know, we, we're so far behind, man. I mean, I think if, if an extraterrestrial... Um, race was to come and was to come on Earth, they, they would be very, very disappointed, you know. Anyway, that's my take, you know. I wanted to talk about the possibilities of extraterrestrial life in the universe and, you know, just by logical thinking, looking at our planet, our place in our galaxy, our galaxy in the universe, it's quite clear that, you know, the chances of us being the only living people, the only living creatures in the entire universe, I mean, it's, um, I would say, 0.00001% possible. But uh, we have to admit that, you know, there must be other creatures, other living creatures, and some much more advanced than us, somewhere in the universe. Cheers. <laughs>